I'm Carol Smith, and welcome to my virtual PyCon session on Implementing Ethics, Developing Trustworthy AI. Some legal ease, and let's get into it. So your goal is to create AI systems that are safe and trustworthy, and today I'm going to talk about some tools that can help you to get to that goal and to be successful in your work. This is early purposeful work, so it's not just about the algorithms. I'm also going to be talking about the conduct, the interactions, the intents, the work that you want to imbue into your system, the values that you want to bring into that system, and how to get to that, uh, that successful point. The first step is to have a diverse team. And what I mean by diversity is diverse with regard to race, gender, culture, of course, but also with regard to education, the schools, the programs that your team has attended, their thinking processes, their disability status, and many, many more aspects that make them different from each other. These diversity um, aspects are what can make a team stronger. And this is not about lowering the bar. We're talking about extending it, actually making space for this diversity and making an inclusive environment. And these diverse individuals, of course, need to be talented, but also multidisciplinary. So the team needs to include a variety of skill sets and problem framing approaches to be successful. And this is context dependent. So in some teams, you may need more data scientists and programmers and others projects, you may need more machine learning experts. That's going to vary. An additional aspect is having curiosity experts. And these include people like myself, people who call themselves UX researchers, UX uh, designers, interaction specialists. They might uh, be digital anthropologists. These are the types of people who are going to really focus on understanding the situation, the abilities of the people who will use the system, and how the system is going to be used. And they'll help you to answer the questions that you might have about how and what and why people are doing various things with the system. And they'll help to activate curiosity in everyone on the team by conducting UX activities. These also should include social scientists, ethicists, and many, many more roles, but at the same time, keeping those teams small. This is not an easy problem to solve, but it's important to figure this out for, your, uh, for the quality of the product that you're building. There's high value in diverse teams, as I mentioned, and there are many reasons for this. The ones mentioned in Harvard Business Review are that they focus more on facts, they process facts more carefully, and that they become more innovative because of their bringing together of so many different ways of thinking, and because they're all individuals and uh, they are minorities on their own, they are likely to become more aware of their own potential biases and actually try to be more careful when they're processing those facts. Um, and so this diverse team coming together, because they're all so different, are going to think about things in ways that a team that is very similar may not. They'll also be more likely to notice things that a team that has all had very similar education or similar experiences may not notice. So great minds think different, and this is an important value that we want to move forward with as we're developing AI systems. There are some requirements to having an inclusive workplace, and that includes representative, diverse leadership. So without this, you're not going to have good retention. So you may notice at a lot of uh, workplaces that you may have been in, there will be an individual hired who's very different from everyone else, but they don't stay. And that is because they don't see that leadership there that's going to support them and who looks like them, or who at least is different like they are. Um, and individual differences need to be acknowledged and accepted. So allowing us to bring our whole selves to work. Now that we're all working from home, at least I hope you are, um, this actually is helping to show the diversity in our lives. People are bringing their um, pets and, and babies and whoever else is in their lives into our screens. And this is helping to make a more welcoming community environment. We want people to feel valued and connected and, and that they belong. And this all will help to make a better system. The next step is to adopt technology ethics. And there are many, many different versions of ethics that you can look at. Some of them are created by organizations such as the ACM, Association for Computing Machinery. Some come from corporate organizations, Microsoft, Google. Some come from uh, organizations such as the Montreal Declaration for Responsible AI out of the university. And even the US Department of Defense has a set of uh, AI ethics. 
And these help you to harmonize cultural variation. So when you're bringing together that very diverse team, you need something for them all to tie together, to bridge the changes or the differences in their ways of thinking together. And this helps you to do that. It also can help you to balance the pace of change. So industry pressure may push you to move faster and faster, but technology ethics can help you tie to what's really important, to help you know what your team is trying to do and to keep your eye on the goal. It also gives all of the individuals in your teams explicit permission to consider and question the breadth of the implications of your systems. So it really helps them to feel that they have a role in questioning what is happening and why we're making the decisions we're making. And that's the kind of thing that you want to value and that you want to encourage in your teams is being uh, comfortable enough to bring up concerns early so that you can address them and mitigate and or prevent them. So as this team coalesces on the shared set of technology ethics, and the one I actually recommend is the Montreal Declaration of Responsible AI, uh, this has a nice long list of uh, broad thoughts and ideas and topics that are covered, and so it should cover almost any technical uh, situation that you uh, have in your organization. And this is good because you can start with this set, and then as you determine how you're using it and what's working and what's not, you can begin to customize potentially your set of technology ethics that works best with your organization. And the coalescing around those tech ethics is just part of building this team. So you've got diverse, inclusive leaders, you have a diverse, multidisciplinary team, and you have that shared set of technology ethics that everyone can come together around and use that to help to guide them into making these great AI systems. So to actually do this work, you need a framework to, to tie everything together. And that's what I'm introducing today. It's a UX framework for designing trustworthy AI. And this helps you get to where you're going, to making tech trustable ethical AI. So using that uh, set of technology ethics and tying it together with this framework, we'll get to that trustable ethical AI. This involves a lot of conversations to help people understand each other and what the purpose is of the system. So this UX framework can help you by phrasing difficult topics, framing those topics, so that you can talk about what you value. Um, who could be hurt by the system? What lines won't our AI cross? How are we shifting power? And how we track our progress? These are really important questions to think about as early as possible. And there are many, many, many more. And by having a framework to have these conversations, these conversations will happen um, if you encourage them to. This is probably very new and uncomfortable work for many of you. And unfortunately, this work is uncomfortable for almost everyone. Uh, ethical design is not superficial. Laura Kalbeg uh, talks about this uh, in her talks. And this work can be very uncomfortable, but it's important work and it's important to be able to protect the people that we're supposed to be helping. And so we have to do it. You can prompt those conversations with a checklist. So this is a checklist I've worked on. Um, there's a QR code there that you can uh, scan to get to the download. And what you do is you pair a checklist with your technical ethics. So you have that set of ethics, and you need to bridge the gap between statements that you might find in it, such as do no harm, and what you're actually going to be doing with your system. And this will help you to reduce the risk and unwanted bias in the system to do mitigation planning, and also to support the inspection so that you know what you're inspecting and why and what you need to do yet to make your system as ethical as possible. So the prompts that you'll find um, in checklists will help reveal hidden tasks. These are some examples in the checklist that I'm proposing. And uh, for example, we work to speculatively identify the full range of risks and benefits. So if you haven't done these various items, that means that there may be some hidden tasks that you need to identify and uh, put into your backlog and actually give responsibility to someone on your team to address. Um, it may mean that there are many, many tasks you need to do. It may be that you just need to do one more thing to make sure everything is um, as you want it to be. And so this will help you to determine if you've done the right work and if there's still work left to do. The UX framework itself has four main aspects, and these four are accountable to humans, cognizant of speculative risks and benefits, respectful and secure, and honest and usable. And I'll go through each of these, and I'm going to use a scenario to help you to tie it together. 
and this is the Right Staff scenario. Right Staff is an AI shift scheduling system, and the users are intended to be store managers of fast food restaurants. So the goals of Right Staff are to improve the decision making for staffing and to improve scheduling, and it's also to reduce the bias of shift scheduling um, and shift shift selection. Uh, frequently, what happens within restaurants is that uh, the friends of the manager get the better shifts and more shifts, and other people don't, and so there's a lot of of bias there and, and unfairness. And so this system is being made in order to reduce those aspects of unfairness. So accountable to humans, this is the first aspect of the, of the framework. And this, it talks about ensuring humans have ultimate control, that we are able to monitor and control risk throughout the entire system and throughout its life, its lifetime. And that humans are responsible for final decisions regarding a person's life, their quality of life, their health, and their reputation. This is really about making sure that humans can unplug the machines. Grady Booch says this in his TED Talk, and this is the core of the majority of the work that I'm going to be talking about today. We want to make sure that humans are always in control and that humans are in the loop throughout the entire life cycle of the system. This is never a situation where you set it and forget it, but rather humans are consistently and constantly monitoring and managing these systems. Significant decisions that the system might make need to be explained, they need to be able to be overridden, and they need to be appealable and reversible by humans. And so for right staff, when we think about that scenario, the manager should be able to reschedule people as needed. So the AI system may do that initial scheduling of the staff, but the manager needs to be able to come in and make changes as needed. So that's one example of how this framework might affect that particular system. The responsibilities need to be explicitly defined between the AI system and the humans. And so with right staff, there's the AI system, right staff, and they're the managers. And so we need to determine who is going to be able to pick employees to schedule. How do we define shifts and who does that work? What's the method to integrate new information? So for example, if some right staff employees are out sick with COVID, unfortunately, how do we manage that system? Um, what do we do about that situation? And is it the AI system or the manager that, that actually handles that? And how about with resignations? How do we change the shifts if necessary? How do we manage that individual's absence? And is it the system or the manager that's doing that work? Another example is, would we want right staff to be able to turn itself off if it noticed that there was something wrong, if there was an issue in the system? And if it does turn itself off, what are the implications? How do we communicate that to staff if necessary? What does that do to their schedules? And what happens when it's turned back on? And how does that affect their schedules? So thinking through these implications early will help us to build a system that is robust and, and able to uh, be uh, trustable by the humans who are needing to use it. The second aspect is cognizant of speculative risks and benefits. So this is about identifying the full range of harmful and malicious use, as well as good and beneficial use of the system, and thinking about the blind spots, the unwanted and unintended consequences. There will be a lot of things that you don't expect, but the more we can be speculative about the potential outcomes of the system, the better prepared we'll be to deal with them. And so one way to deal with this is by conducting UX research and using activities to activate curiosity within the team. We can be speculative about all the types of misuse and abuse, but we really only need to think about the worst case scenarios. Um, and you can do this through an activity called Black Mirror uh, Episodes, where if you're familiar with the TV show, you can uh, imagine what a Black Mirror episode would be like for your system. And this allows you to identify potentially severe abuses or misuses and the consequences potentially of those. And this is an image of a, a template that was created by the IX DA uh, chapter in Pittsburgh uh, for a workshop, and that's been conducted multiple times very successfully, and I highly recommend this type of activity for your organization. 
The potential abusability of rights staff, um, if we recall the goals of it, it's for faster staffing decisions and scheduling and reducing that bias of shift selection. So thinking about rights staff and how it could potentially be abused, let's say the system began to prioritize people with easier schedules, so people who had less conflicts in the system for scheduling. And if the managers go ahead and approve those schedules, that may reinforce bias that was already a problem in the past. And then the people who were previously discriminated against may still be discriminated against. And so instead of reducing the bias of shift selection, the system may inadvertently begin to reinforce that same problem all over again. And so we need to be speculative about that situation and identify it early on, and then think about how we're going to create communication and mitigation plans to deal with that situation. So plan for the unwanted consequences. Think about that as a potential problem. So how do we deal with the system if it's beginning to learn the wrong things? And then how do we deal with that? Who can report it? To whom? Uh, should we turn off the system? If we turn it off, who do we need to notify? And then what are the consequences of turning off that system or changing the system or um, undoing the scheduling? And thinking through that will help you to be prepared if that situation arises or to prevent that situation ideally. Respectful and secure is the third aspect of this framework, and this is about valuing humanity, ethics, equity, fairness, accessibility, diversity, and inclusion. If we're going to make an ethical system, it needs to inc be inclusive, it needs to be uh, valuing the things that are important in those types of environments. It includes respecting privacy and data rights, making the system robust, valid, and reliable, and providing understandable security. All these things are aspects that are necessary for humans to trust these systems. So for right staff, respectful and secure might be about who has visibility for reasons for changing schedules. There may be some very private reasons that people share with the managers, but that they would not want to be in the system for other managers to see. And how is that information used? If it is put into the system, what happens with that information? And how is personally identifiable information of employees protected? What are we doing to keep that PII out of other people's hands and safe and protected in the system? Honest and usable is the fourth aspect of the framework, and this is about valuing transparency with the goal of engendering trust. We need to explicitly state the identity as an AI system, um, and if there is a potential for that to be confusing, such as in a chat system, we need to ensure that we're reminding humans that they are speaking with an AI system in that situation. Fairness is also an important part of this, and removing that unwanted bias in the data initially is an ideal situation, but that's not always possible. So we need to at least show awareness of known and desirable bias. So often you'll have a system that is biased in a particular direction because that is the goal of the organization to uh, make sure that people are aware of a particular type of information and not as aware of another for whatever reason, but we need to acknowledge that issue and over communicate on it so that people really understand the system and its limitations. For right staff, the system is built to reduce the known bias in existing data, ideally, um, but we also need to make it easy to report bias um, if it is a potential problem or prevent it, ideally. So if we can build the system to reduce that bias, that's wonderful, and if we can't, we need to mitigate for that problem. So that is the UX framework. Uh, we need to be intentional to keep people safe around these four aspects. And by building around these four aspects, we can bring uh, an ethical AI system to fruition. So accountable to humans, cognizant of speculative risks and benefits, respectful and secure, honest and usable. And we aren't perfect. So the AIs that we build will not be perfect either. Uh, we need diverse teams and inclusive environments to be able to be as creative as possible within the work that we're doing. We need to adopt technical ethics to be able to bring each other together to have us coalesce around something that we can all share. We need to encourage deep conversations by using a checklist and other types of prompts. And we need to activate curiosity so that our teams are speculative and imaginative about the ways the system can be used and abused. 
And another idea is to reward team members for finding ethics bugs. This comes from Dr. Ayanna Howard, and she spoke on the Artificial Intelligence Podcast with Lex Friedman recently. And this is a great way to support your team and to entice them to do the work, the right work, to help to build a great, trustable AI system. So I encourage you to evangelize for human values, make ethical, transparent, and fair AI systems. And if you'd like to continue the conversation, you can learn more at the Software Engineering Institute website at Carnegie Mellon University, and there is a QR code for your reference. And also reach out to me. I would be happy to, consider, to continue the conversation with you. Thank you very much.